Hey guys, today is going to be the history of Europe every year by what's the name? Cotero? Is that the name of this channel? By Cotero. <laughs> um yeah. Uh I wonder what they I wonder if he's really what could he mean by every year? Are we going to start by Roman times, or are we going to start by mm, Fall of Rome? Where are we starting? But uh, let's go ahead and find out where we're starting by, you know, watching the video. <laughs> what is wrong with me? It's still a map of Europe every year. Okay. Okay, since 400 BCE. Oh, shit, and we're going to get populations, too? Okay. Norsemen, Germanic... Okay, I like this list. I like this map. Okay, and this is before the rise of Rome. Wait, 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 wait. Three nine... Are we going to see the rise of... Oh, we're going to see the rise of uh, Alexander. Sick. Let's pay attention. Yep, we've got Mastodon rising right now. Right here. Because this, this is probably where all the action is going to be in Macedon. Yep, Philip is growing. Boom, Alexander the Great. What's fun, what's interesting, <laughs> but what's really cool about that, though, is if you looked at Rome at the same time, the that Rome, the early days of Rome. I'm not sure if Rome was a kingdom still by the time of Alexander's fall or not, but they rose somewhat with Alexander. Like, it, 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 it kind of, at least I've always, you know, kind of seen them different. Like, in different, uh, I've always pictured Rome and then Alexander the Great as different time periods. Like, pretty different time periods, but no, they, they live freaking close to each other. Rome was around and started to grow when Alexander the Great came around, which is interesting. I don't know, maybe I'm weird. This is music, bruh. I'm gonna turn that down. Because it'll get me copyright striked. Yeah, so right now we're just gonna see the rise of Rome uh, for a good few hundred centuries. <laughs> All right, so that was when, all right, now Hannibal's been defeated. And it's crazy to think, like, Rome's already been around for 200 centuries. And, like, they're, they're still pretty small to what they would become. And it's just, it's just kind of interesting to see how quick they like, once... Uh, the empire starts how big they'll grow real fast all right uh, Caesar will be coming in soon in the 50s all right the conquest of Anatolia and the Bosporus all right yep there's there's Caesar <laughs> Oh, Caesar's dead. Okay. We're now in the Empire. Hold up. Rome really went that far into Germany? Really? I thought I thought the cutoff was like here. I thought this was They have to lose this. Yeah, there it goes. There's the proper borders that I know. <laughs> it's also funny to see how long uh, the Britons remained, you know, independent until now. <laughs> Border, 
Hadrian's Wall. Nope, now Hadrian's Wall. God, it's crazy to think how huge Rome was. And how long they were able to hold that much territory. And also weird to see that it was only 54 million people. Only 50... Now only 53 million people. Back then. While today this is like what? 300 million? <laughs> Maybe 500 million? Because they have lots of land in Africa right now. In Egypt. In the Middle East. Oh, here comes the fall. Brief, brief back together. Oh, the split. Okay. Oh, back to you being unified. All right, all right. All right, here comes the Huns. Eastern Rome. All right, they're back to being split. Britain's independent. Visigoths, all right, now we're in the fall of Western Rome. Sad time indeed. A very sad time. All right, the Huns are gone. Oh, the Anglo-Saxons have arrived. All right, now for Francia and the Ostrogoths. Well, six, that's, that's why I study. I study that. Uh, that's Justinian. Yes, yeah, that's Justinian the first. Oh, a cognitive. God. Byzantium, fix your borders. Oh, oh, now we're... Oh, Byzantine's falling. No, it's a sad time. It's a sad, sad time. Did the music stop? It stopped. Weird. Okay. Uh, yep, the rise of the Umayyads. And then their defeat at Tours. God, it's interesting. You know, one thing that's like kind of forgotten. Yeah, the, the Muslims ruled a little bit of southern France. You know, you never really... Just because of how the culture would be for the next several, you know, like I guess next thousand years... And even today, you don't really, there's no lasting impact really of the Muslim culture. But there is in, there's certainly that culture still remaining in Iberia. For uh, there, there is still that architecture, right? But you don't see it in southern France, even though they ruled this for a long time. Well, a decent length of time, I should say, is the proper term, because they didn't really rule it for all that long. Now the Abbasids are in control. Charlemagne's come to power. He's gonna kick ass. <laughs> Jeez, did he really? It's all. Oh my god, he really ruled. <laughs> Damn. If only he didn't split the kingdom, the empire up upon his death. Between his three children or whatever. Imagine that if they, like, worked together. And now we'll have the rise of Wessex. Uh, Alfred is king now. No, now Alfred is king. So much information. All right, Alfred's dead now. And now it's Edward the Elder who's king of Wessex. And bam, he's king of England now. Germany is a state. Oh, the Papal States are a thing. 
Byzantium still going strong. Okay, the establishment of the HRE. Oh, Byzantium conquering Bulgaria. Good, good, good. I like you like to see it. <laughs> the brief north the brief North Sea Empire. Oh no, here comes 1066. <laughs> the fall of the Anglo-Saxons is coming. And bam! No! No! Oh, this is what's going to be really cool to see. What I'm looking forward to seeing is uh, the Hundred Years' War and uh, Henry V's uh, conquests. Brief conquests, I should say. Oh, Byzantines are dying even more. They're barely holding on. Oh yeah, and, yep, there we go, the Angevin, Angevin Empire. God, it's so weird to think of, like, it, it, it's not talked about a lot, and I feel like it needs to get talked about more. How France literally was pretty much dead to the English, was pretty much completely controlled by the English, even though actually it wouldn't be until Henry V, who was in the... I forget what year he ruled, but it'd be Henry V that actually changes, you know, makes English the court language. For after 1066, the language, and up until Henry V became king, the language of England was French. The language of the royalty and the noble courts, their language was French. And then obviously, of course, the language of the Pope. You know, Latin, of course, was certainly important to the nobility and royalty uh, because it's medieval Europe. But yes, the the language of the nobles in England was French until Henry V. Up uh, Byzantines dying to Bulgaria. No Latin Empire. Holy oh, shit, Mongols came in. Okay, Byzantines are back. You like to see it. You love to see it. Alright, I think 1300s is when Henry V is king. Sweden's got their empire. I think it's around these late 1300s that it happens. Or not. I guess we already passed it. I must have missed it or something. I can't remember what time. Oh, nope, there it is. And then, boom, they're dead. <laughs> By the way, I could be wrong. Like, as I've said... I'm a late 800s England historian. I don't I don't remember the times of like Henry V or whatnot. I think it's cool. I think they're cool. I love reading about them, but I don't know really their exact times because it all blurs. <laughs> Are we the Kalmar Union? Oh, now it's just Denmark, Norway. Soon we'll be getting the Swedish Empire. Austria is rising to power. There's Austria. Or, well, the Habsburg dynasty. Well, the Ottomans. Ugh, I missed the fall of Byzantium. No! Shit. All right, right around now is... The Swedish Empire in full swing almost. Yo. It's wild to think. Okay, so this is the Hundred Years' War. No. Thirty Years' War, I believe, is taking place right now. And yeah, Sweden fucking invaded the HRE and occupied a lot of it. Dang, if only they could keep it. <laughs>
Oh, we just witnessed. Yep, there's. Uh, when's Sweden? Sweden gets Norway in the 1800s, I believe. Russia still doesn't own Finland. France has their modern borders essentially right now. <laughs> Oh, yep, yeah, Napoleon. And he's dead. <laughs> Alright, Norway, Sweden are unified. This music is intense. Unification of Germany, hell yeah. Oh, we're coming in on World War One, ladies and gentlemen. We are closing in on the Great War. Norway is independent. Great war. And it's over. <laughs> Alright, now we'll be closing in on the rise of Hitler. Alright, it started. And he's, he's gone. I just love these kind of videos, these every year videos, because like of how, how fast things happen. And boom, the Soviet Union is gone. And now we are in the modern day. Yeah. Cool. Great video. Entertaining video. Let's see if we can go to 1453. Whoop. 14 <laughs> I'm gonna keep trying. <laughs> God damn it. No. Ah, perfect. There we go. 1453, the fall of Constantinople. Um Ah, great video. I look I like these kind of videos. It's really cool to see uh just how much things change and also which countries kind of keep the same borders despite the centuries, right? Like Spain essentially keeps the same borders. Um, France, kind of, England really does too. Same with Norway, for the most part. Uh, the Scandina Scandinavian countries kind of keep the same border. Sweden was the only one that went batshit crazy and tried to conquer, like, Eastern Europe. Um, Scotland kind of keeps the same borders as well. But yeah, it's really cool. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to leave a suggestion down below for what you want to see me react to next. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye. That doesn't sound right. That didn't feel right coming out of my voice. Out of my voice box. I think I'm losing my fucking mind. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you.